So that's a quote by George Box that's been around for a long time, and I, I always use it when I'm teaching predictive analytics, and students always ask me, you know, I can build a model, how good does it have to be? And that's a really hard question to answer. Um, it's a really hard question to answer because it depends, and I drive students to it um, by saying that whenever they ask the question, I say, oh, it depends. And the reason it depends is exactly that, that all models are approximations, so any predictive model that we build is an approximation to some real process or other, um, but some of those approximations are useful for us. And what I want to do is go through basically a, a series of lessons, and I'm going to go through six lessons uh, to make sure that we all get home at a, a reasonable hour, um, that I guess I've picked up from building predictive models over the years, and hopefully they might be useful to people. So these are the six lessons, and I'll basically just jump straight into them. And the first one is around what we mean by prediction. And when we build predictive models, what exactly are we talking about? And I guess Connor was talking about it there, where he's talking about decision making. Um, and all of predictive modeling, in my mind at least, should, be, should start from the point of wanting to make better decisions. And this is a kind of process diagram that we use all the time. And basically over here, someone is going to make a decision. We're going to try and extract some insight from some data to help that do, it, do that in a better way. And in particular, if we're thinking about predictive models, the insight is going to be the output from a predictive model. We're going to use some predictive model to make an output here. But I think a, a useful thing to think about is what can that prediction be, right? So what's the range of things that we can talk about? And I've used this. I don't know if people have come across this before. So it's Kaggle.com. So anyone who's, who's into predictive modeling will probably have used Kaggle.com. Kaggle.com is kind of a marketplace for crowdsource predictive modeling. So if you have a, a predictive modeling project, and rather than hiring someone, you can put that project up on Kaggle.com with a cash prize and then data scientists all around the world will try and build their best predictive model. And there's a leaderboard, and whoever wins at the end uh, or has the best model wins the prize. And you can see some of them are, some of them are worth a go. So there's prizes of $100,000 up there, and they kind of go all the way down to, to competitions that you just do for fun or for smaller money. But what they're useful for is to see the range of things that we can look at when we think about predictive modeling. And I just want to go through a few here. So, the first one is this idea of the bike sharing demand forecast. So this is a Canadian city who has a scheme just like Dublin Bikes here. And what they would like is a nice predictive model that allows them to know next week on Tuesday how many bikes am I going to need. Right? So what's the demand on that going to be? So essentially, we're predicting an unknown value um, into some time in the future. And that's very comfortably a forecast. Right? So we have some kind of time series, and we're going to forecast off into the future. And one of the things that I see a lot when I talk about predictive modeling to people is that's what people think about. So they have a notion of someone doing something at a point in time in the future. And that applies to some of the predictive modeling tasks we do, like the second one here, which is a marketing response um, challenge, where essentially you're trying to predict the propensity of somebody to respond to a particular offer. Um, and again, you're going to predict the likelihood of someone to do something into the future. And that very comfortably sits in as a, a ranking problem, essentially. So you're going to take all of your customers, and you want to put them in a ranking from most likely to respond to least likely to respond to this uh, marketing ad that you're going to put out to them. And that'll tell you about who's going to do something in the future. And you can make your decision about who you should send this ad to and who you should ignore, essentially. So both of those sit very comfortably in the idea of making a prediction into the future. But I think the definition of prediction we should think about is much broader than that. So if we look at these two challenges on Kaggle, there's the ultrasound nerve segmentation challenge, which is an image processing challenge where basically there's um, scan or ultrasounds. And the job is to recognize whether those ultrasound images contain nerves or not. Um, the other one down here is a job salary prediction. Problem. So here, given a text description of a job, can you stamp that with an expected salary? So can you essentially label that with an expected salary? And we can think about these as labels or classification type tasks. And I think that's a key thing to keep in mind. So when we think about predictive modeling, um, that we, we don't always think about it having to have a temporal effect. It doesn't always have to be a prediction into the future. If I skip ahead of that, the definition that I think is useful, so in data analytics, a prediction is an assignment of a value to an unknown variable. And I think keeping that broad definition of predictive modeling is useful. And probably, if you think back over all the talks that we've seen in the last couple of days, um, hopefully most of them will kind of sit in there. And I think it's more useful than always thinking about a temporal effect behind that. So I think that's the key thing to think about first. So remembering that prediction and predictive modeling allows us to do a lot of different things but always to focus back on the decision and say, what's a, what kind of prediction is going to help me most in making a better decision and a better data-driven decision that might turn into a data-driven discussion at some point on the back of that. 
The second thing is, I, I really like this, there's this thing called the no free lunch theorem. 